Good evening, viewers. Welcome to another episode of the Speaker's Gallery. Our guest today is Muhammad, Muhammad Wali Hassan. Muhammad Wali Hassan is a development scientist. He's actually an environmental, or what you call a sustainable development expert. Muhammad Wali is the managing director of Horn Consult, which does a lot of studies in the whole region, in the Horn of Africa. In addition to that, Mohammed is one of the very few people who made it to universities, in, national universities in the country in the 90s and the 80s from Northeastern Province. As a matter of fact, during his time, there were less than 20 students who made it to universities, the public universities in the whole country. Welcome, Mohammed Wali. Thank you. You were, yeah, you were also a student leader, I remember that very well. Yes. For the uh, benefit of the young boys and girls from Northeastern Province. Yes. Yeah. You maybe will give us a little bit a brief history of where you went to school and how you ended up being what you are now. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker uh, Farah. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, basically, my background is uh, uh, I was brought up. I, I, I'm from northern parts of Kenya, mainly Wajia. I, in my primary, I studied uh, a boarding school in Madera, Ramo Nomadic. Uh, in my high school, I finished uh, Wajia High School. Uh, a typical uh, young Somali boy uh, went through the travels of uh, life in northern Kenya. Boarding school, uh, the challenges of, uh, you know, enough, I mean, teachers, uh, maybe uh, facilities, academic. Uh, maybe in boarding schools also the issues of nutrition and environmental. The weather was terribly bad. I mean, not bad, but uh, hot. Uh, poverty. Uh, poverty, which was uh, not individualized, but you know, across the Rampant. region. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was the whole. The whole. I mean, region and. Uh, it was the, because of the marginal aspect of the area, of the area and the history of the area. And the history of the area, uh, when you look back, uh, cut from maybe the central parts of the country, which were productive, and uh, maybe not having access to other trade and opportunities. Uh, Pretty much a closed area, the way it was before. Yes. NFD and, and the contiguous areas. Yes. The closed districts. Yes. 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 So I finished my high school uh, in Wajia High School in uh, 1991, uh, and uh, in a stream of about uh, maybe four, three streams of about 120 students, we were about nine students I think who met to the university. Which was the maximum actually? Wajir and Mandera put together did not even have as many as those nine school students I think that year coming to the public universities. Uh, I'm, I'm aware of only Wajia High School at that time. I think uh, in Wajia, w w out of about 129 of us who were able to make to the university around that time. Uh, of course, again, the, the limitations which I have uh, expounded on. Mm -hmm. uh, we came to, uh, I went to Egerton University. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, those times, I think we were just assigned what to do. There was no option of probably choosing what you need to do. But I, I, I think I, I, we were lucky enough to be selected to join, uh, to do a BSc in Natural Resource Management, mm -hmm. which was, uh, I think, the options of uh, range management and uh, forestry management and wildlife management, mm -hmm. uh, which I think at that time, uh, it was probably- The in thing. The in thing uh, yes. for the region. Yes. Uh, probably that is the, what, what guided the policy that guided probably how students were selected. Mm -hmm. uh, I, more or less specialized in dry land resource management, uh, rangeland management. And I went to Israel for a short program and uh, on desert agrobiology and worked with UNEP also mm -hmm. uh, in the dry land uh, and desertification uh, sector mm -hmm. before I later went for my master's to the UK for a course in environment and development uh, at the University of London School of Oriental and African Studies. So basically, that is now uh, in you terms of- You got your master's from University yes. of uh, London. Yes. Uh, SOAS, School of- uh, Yes, Oriental of course, uh, when we were there, 
there were a lot of activities. Uh, there was the issue called Northeastern University uh, Student Association. Association, I think, which we are one time. Uh, yeah, your patron. You are, uh, our patron. I was uh, around that time, 1994, elected to be the, the, the Secretary General for Nepusa, yes. which I can remember very well. You and uh, Philip Leakey, who yes. was at that time for Richard, Richard Leakey. Was Richard it Leakey. Richard Leakey? Paul who, Mitte, yeah. Who was who was yeah and Paul Mitte, who yes. were forming the the Safina Party at that time? Yes. You did actually a fundraiser for us for the university, for the university association, association <laughs> yes. which was a, a handsome sum of around that time, which was good around five hundred thousand, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, to help the to help at least the, yeah the students, you know, who students those who are especially extremely needy yes, and yes, yes, uh, yes, and yes, things yes. like that. So that is the basic uh, background information of Muhammad Weli mm -hmm. as a young boy who came from mm -hmm. very Kenya, rural, rural background, tending uh, boarding the schools, yes. yeah, and then uh, high school, and then to university. Mm -hmm. uh, in the process, uh, making some professional within the boarding schools, the challenges of coming from that rural setting where you take camel milk and you take camel meat. Yes. Uh, and, and then, of course, you come now. You have to contend with porridge in the morning from maize yes. flour and the ugali itself. And the ugali itself, which was, which, which was quite uh, a challenge which for you. It, and maybe it might not be even well cooked, and uh, yeah. and uh, you know, you might not the digestive system might not be <laughs> it might not be very very uh, very uh, acceptable, and sometimes you might not uh, have the necessary energy, okay. including the heat of the sun and all yes. that. Yeah. So that when we went to university, I think. Yes. The weather was so different that we could not even cope up. It was too cold for us to, to cope up with that weather for at least a year mm -hmm. uh, before we acclimatized ourselves to the, to the environment. So that is the... Compared uh, to students from other, other, other parts of the country, when you look at your grades, which were very, very co comparatively not as good as their grades. Yes. But then because you didn't have the opportunity, you didn't have sufficient teachers, you didn't have equipment, you didn't have the right nutrition in there. The weather was very hot. You know, Wajir did not even have proper toilet system. You still use the bucket system in there. And, and then you come into here, the initial shock is there of the climate and, and the fact that everybody seems to be ahead of you. But within a very short period of time, when you have equal opportunity now, you were able to catch up and be one of the top students in your class. Yes, uh, actually, uh, that is uh, that is the that is the uniqueness of the human nature ad adaptability. Yes. I mean, once you're given the right uh, uh, opportunity, opportunity yes. and you you are just like any other human being. Mm -hmm. Your ability to uh, to to do better is, is there. Mm -hmm. Now it depends on the individual effort you put into into that. Yes. And uh, despite the fact that maybe there were some guys who came to the class with an A or yes. We came with, and many I think, grade, yes, yeah, 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 and many grades. Yeah. When we came together at the, at the grading level, we were way below. We, 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 were, we were among the best students who finished uh, uh, in the end, in the final in the, analysis. In, in the final analysis, yes, yes. yes. And in terms of even opportunities, uh, maybe when opportunities came up, we were considered like, for example, when I was joining UNEP around that time. Uh, I think it was very competitive. Who is to be given to do internship at UNEP? And uh, because of the we had to write a project proposal to be part of that and uh, we were able to be selected on the basis of the of on our ability to Meritocracy. submit yeah 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 mm -hmm. to, to submit along that so what, what you, you definitely would find fault right now with what the tsc has done the teacher service commission to create a minimum entry point for all teachers in the teacher training colleges uh, and that also puts on the same footing a student who has had Al Shabaab attacks all over him where the teachers ran away from them. He's probably never seen a body teacher or a chemistry teacher or a physics teacher. And they had to study on their own. And they end up with a D plus or a C minus. And now they cannot go and train as teachers. You have to have a minimum of a C standing, which essentially is what everybody else in the country. So when there is no equal opportunity, equal merit yes. uh, is, 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 is a misplaced notion. Because everywhere in the world, including the most developed countries like the U.S., have got affirmative action through quota system where you lower certain grades for people who have not had marginalized or marginal areas, who have not had as, 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 as good an opportunity to excel as the others. Uh, and, and, and then it's the, you, 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 but in here, we're going back because I remember when you were a student leader and I was your patron, there was this motion I brought into Parliament that uh, literally changed the face of education in the Eastern province, or the arid and semi-arid areas. Absolutely. Uh, because overnight, 
we're able to take hundreds and hundreds of students into institutions of higher learning in the country because of the motion. But right now, you can't go to teacher training college with a D plus or a C minus from Northeastern Province and from Turkana and from, uh, you know, Pokot and all these other areas who Lamu, with some of them have never seen Tana River. How does that, how do you see that? I mean, you are a living example of that. Yes. You went in there with the mean grade of what, C plus? Am I, uh, I think C plus, uh, C plus uh, which C was plus. the minimum, I think, in uh, university, entry. entry to By the university. By the time you left, you yes. were one of the top students in your yes, class. Yes, 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 we were among the best in our class. Yes. And the other issue is uh, education actually should be a local uh, issue. I mean, uh, who is to be trained uh, to be a teacher? I think he has to be coming from the local environment. Yes. And for example, uh, like let us say if the, the uh, meritoc meritocracy is supposed to be, of course, uh, is a good idea in terms of, uh, like let us say, if the whole country has equal opportunity, has equal opportunity. Yes. like let us say, uh, TSC, if it says minimum grade should be uh, C, C, C standing, C standing. Yes. it should be for that, uh, for, all, for all students. But if it's abused, if it's not uh, considered uh, the circumstances which those uh, fr from northern Kenya come yes. from, I think it will be unfair. For example, uh, it's abused in the sense that uh, in, not in, 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 in Kenya, the TSC, uh, they recruit people from other parts of the region. To when send they, to Northeastern. To send to Northeastern. As an employment opportunity. Yes, and and yes. immediately they settle there. Yes. Whatever excuses they can find. Whether they will it come is, back they again. They will come back here. So there's a permanent so shortage of teachers There's a always. permanent so shortage of teachers. Yes. That's why I think any policy, yes. whenever you are whenever you're developing policy. And now policy, when we wanted to train our own, uh, the TSC comes and says, no, yes. you can't train. Whenever, you whenever, whenever you, are, you are doing a policy for her, I think you have to look at the circumstances which within that area you are setting the policy. So I think in Northern Kenya, policy should be set, probably uh, education should be devolved fully, mm -hmm. so that, uh, I mean, at the, at the county levels, they can develop, they can now develop their standards. They, of course, a national guideline policy has to be there, mm -hmm. but they should be able to develop their own, uh, their own, I mean, uh, institutions like training colleges, uh, and then they can take to grades. To build their own capacity. To build on their capacities. Mm -hmm. And thanks to devo devolution, uh, there is some aspect uh, uh, of that coming up. Uh, I'm aware of Gia, there is a, there is a, a an MTC, a medical training college. I, I think there's also a private uh, training teachers college. I'm not sure. Gariza, there is. Mandera, there is. They have just developed something. The one in Gariza, 90% of the students are coming from other uh, parts yeah. of the country. So you don't have. That's why I'm saying some of these mm. things should be localized because you have devolved system. Mm. This devolution system should allow. Uh, many things to be developed at the local level, especially now it's security, it's especially it's at the police level. Yeah, at, the, at the police level, yeah. it should be developed. At the education level, to certain extent, maybe uh, primary, basic primary education up to, it should be devolved to uh, instead of ECDC. Mm -hmm. Actually, I did, I did for the Transitional Authority a consultancy on uh, uh, function transfers. Mm -hmm. Immediately they came in mm -hmm. and we were assessing all these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we, went to the counties, people were asking uh, why should, because there was this idea initially of uh, transferring functions mm -hmm. to counties depending on their capacity. Mm -hmm. And they said, who is to build our capacity? We. The guys who are to build our capacity are the ones, who, why we devolve this system is just to run away from the, the, the national, the center. who are corrupt, who are, you know, themselves have, uh, who are developing these policies, which is, you know, skewed. Yeah, which is skewed. So that's why all the functions were transferred mm -hmm. to the counties. Mm -hmm. And uh, within a short time, you could see... Uh, Market development. Yes, Market. despite the fact that some of the negative aspects of corruption and all those things were also devolved. devolved. Yeah. But uh, the benefits were outweighing far much, especially for Northern Kenya. Yes. Then that short period, the impact it had on it. Mm -hmm. So I think it would have been more important. I mean, it would have had more impact mm -hmm. if, for example, the education was devolved to a certain level. Security was also devolved to a certain, certain level, at least to police level. Uh, you know, maybe intelligence, military can be still at the national, but you know, at a localized, so that people can organize their lives to catch up with. Although still national guiding Aye. policies and principles should be there. But Early you know, response. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you were a student leader yes. when I was also your patron in 1993. Uh, just to weigh in on what you have just said. 
I, uh, I uh, sponsored a motion, presented a, a, a private member's motion of affirmative action through quota system, in which which was unanimously carried by parliament at that time. And it was unique because I was in the opposition myself in Fort Kenya. And I, the moment I related exactly the plight of the students from these areas and how education we are decades behind the rest of the country. Uh, ministers on the other side could not believe what we were saying was true. And I remember the late Intimama, uh, Olen Intimama, is the one who seconded my motion with a powerful oratory to say that the country has got to move together, those people have to be brought up. And that affirmative action through quota system must be done. And they lowered the entry points in the universities and also in the tertiary colleges for all the students from those marginal areas, West Pocot included. And I remember very well the former director of the Kenya Medical Training Colleges, who was called Mr. Boyt, took students, he took a massive number, he took 350 students in one year from the province. And uh, in one particular faculty, which was, uh, uh, or a department, which was pretty much the interest of everybody was pharmacy, where students who get admitted to university would rather go and do a diploma in pharmacy than do some of the other, other courses in, uh, in, in the university, including Bachelor of Education sometimes. And 11 students were admitted from Northeastern province some of them with as low grade as a C minus, and hardly anybody above C plus. Nobody was there beyond, beyond C plus. And he told me that this is going to be a pilot project. If these students are not going to perform very well in the first year, I will have to roll back on this system and we will not uh, compromise the academic excellence of these institutions for any other reason, for any reason. Then I got a surprise call from him one year later and he told me, come to my office. I rushed from parliament and I came and saw him. He shook my hands and he told me the 11 boys and girls I admitted in the faculty, of, in the in, 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 in pharmacy uh, department, 10 of them were the 10 top students in that class. 10 top students, student who had a C minus, who was admitted to do pharmacy, performed better than a student who had a B standing or a B plus, or oh, sorry, a B, a B minus from other parts of the country. So this thing is proven in a sense. Uh, pro late Professor Eshwani, uh, I remember, uh, broke ranks with the Joint Admissions Board to admit P1 students to come to and do, do a it. Bachelor of Education. He did the same thing also. And I remember that lot which was graduating, a young man who had a D plus, but went and did, I can't remember, a bit P2 course and ended up doing a P1. When he was brought back again to the college to do a, a Bachelor of Education, he had a first class, top in that graduating class. And, and success stories like that are far too many in the, in the education sector. So I think when, when, we have this, when we have this history, for the TSC to come back right now and roll back that, and the courts also to agree with them, although there's, a, there's an appeal against that, is, is extremely sad. Anyway, let's come back now to your core your core interest, your core field, your core expertise, sustainable development. How, how well have we taken care of our own resources in this country? Well, uh, our water tables, our rivers, our trees and environment, our everything, our waters how the Mao forest, the, the rivers that we have in here, the, all the pollution that's taken place in there, the deforestation and the charcoal that's been burnt in all over the, the country. I mean, how, where are we? Well, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, sustainable development, in terms of environment, uh, in terms of uh, water resource management, in terms of, uh, I mean, uh, Kenya is a relatively, uh, better in the region than any other country. And it could be contributed to maybe uh, the presence of uh, UNEP played a role and the UN Habitat. And uh, uh, not only that, but I mean, in terms of institutional development, uh, the area of uh, water resource management, I mean, environmental management, uh, 
climate change issues, drought and uh, floods uh, management, I think we are relatively uh, better, but there's a lot need that to be done. Uh, institutionally, I think uh, I participated uh, in the early 2000s, 2004, 2005, in the development of integrated water resource management plan uh, with the Ministry of Water, when I think Mada Karua was the Minister. Minister and a Mahmoud, serious minister. A serious minister. For a short period, though. And, uh, and, uh, and Mahmoud Madim was the permanent secretary. Permanent secretary. Uh, that we also lobbied uh, water resource management issues to be put into the buffet, re buffet reduction strategies mm -hmm. uh, uh, at, the fi at the Ministry of Planning and Finance so that budgetary allocations could be done uh, for, 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 for managing those uh, issues. So, uh, Still, then a lot needs to be done, and uh, wherever the shortfalls are in terms of uh, management of these natural resources in Kenya, it's more to do with the politics uh, than policy, uh, like the Mao issue. Forest. Yeah. Forest. Yeah. I think it's something to do with the land management issue and how land is distributed and who is uh, at what uh, position, who can acquire more. Or who, which community can be removed or which community can be allowed to be there. I think it's more to do with the politics of the region then. But the one, the most important thing is uh, the one which is of high concern to the region which we come from, the dry land uh, management issue, is something to do with the drought and something to do with the... Uh, floods. F floods. But mainly drought and the effect of drought. There's a time when drought comes, it used to mean malnutrition and death. Uh, and it doesn't have to be. Drought is something which, I mean, is cyclical, it happens. It used to happen maybe within four or five years, but now it's uh, probably around every three years there's a drought. So preparation and planning, if it's well done, it can be managed. Economic development also, also if it's done. People have got money to buy, you know, uh, food and uh, if they are livestock, they can insure and things like that. So there is change, but uh, generally, uh, the issue to do with the dry land management, uh, drought uh, management issue, climate change. I think those are the areas that need to be focused, to, to be done uh, better. We are relatively, uh, in terms of response, Kenya is relatively uh, uh, improved the last 10 years because there's a drought management authority which you know gathers data and uh, it analyzes and it grades. Uh, there's a, an early warning system probably to know that uh, we are at what level of 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 of, uh, of uh, I mean difficulty in terms of uh, maybe food security in terms of uh, in terms of nutritional availability in terms of disease uh, outbreak related to maybe it's drought uh, drought and also whenever the it rains the effect also it causes in terms of floods and the diseases that are related to how much, how to manage all that we are relatively better but I think uh, if uh, resources are valuable, the counties can do far much uh, better. So I think in a nutshell, uh, the issue of water resource management generally, in terms of the dry land management, uh, drought, uh, I think there is, there, is a, there, is a, there, is a, there is quite improvement, but there is a lot needs to be done. There, there is many things that in, need in to be done. In the 60s and the 70s and partly of the 80s, I remember there was the range land management, range management, yes. which had these blocks Yes, yes. What they call the range blocks in, in northeastern province. Yes. There is a threat now, I think, especially in northern, in, in, in Samburu, maybe Marsabit, Moyale, those sites. There are some certain groups which are coming up. Uh, I don't know, organizations uh, or groups which, you know, trust land. Uh, there is a kind of, uh, you know, carving areas saying that they are going to manage on behalf of the communities, mm -hmm. which is not very clear. So there is this issue of. Uh, land, there was a community land bill. I don't know where it is, and land ownership issues. And as Kenya modernizes, probably uh, land issues will going to be, especially for, the, for those communities, will going to be one of the maybe conflicting areas. Pastoralism, which is an effective uh, economic way of using land in northern, in northern Kenya, because uh, those shrubs and those small grass and those things, livestock eat, they turn it into meat, 
that meat is, you know, you can imagine the ton, inter, uh, number of tons of meat that can and be that produced. That is required every day and every, it has to come uh, only from those regions. From those regions. So uh, I think in terms of policy, I think the land management aspect of it is, is issue. And the, the issue of Kenya, uh, Kenya, uh, uh, there is a trust, Sujit, uh, they call it uh, land trust issues. It, there's been problem in Marsabit, Samburu. Trust land issues. Trust land issues, yes. which I think is questionable because uh, they say there's a group which comes to them, they have a board, they say they're managing on behalf of the community, they close. And the principles of pastoralism is basically a free, free range uh, movement. movement. And uh, there are seasons for where grazings are done and seasons where, I mean, water. Wet, wet, season wet, wet grazing season and dry season, dry season yes. grazing, so you, you and it's going to allow disrupt. the land to, re to replenish. Itself. And when you when you enclose an area of about thousands of kilometers square, I mean it, it stops movement of people and livestock to access maybe range uh, products. So that's I think the biggest challenge which will be there. There was I don't know to what extent the, the, this has been resolved, but after the constitution, new constitution has come in, there was something to be called community land bill. And uh, it was to clarify on, it was a little bit consultatious at parliament at the last time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far it has progressed. I but think so the central government is slowly inching closer into it to take all that community land. From yes, yes, which, which I think is an issue that is going to be a disaster. It's an issue, disaster, is, yes. is an issue that needs yes. to be addressed. Yes, yes, yes. because yes. that essentially is a community land and should yeah. be left as, as such. Yes. Uh, basically, sustainable development is that interface between development and protection of the environment or sustainability of that environment itself. Yeah. Environmental protection. Use the resources, but in a manner that essentially is not Sustain. very, just, is sustainable. We have uh, a forest cover, a forest cover ratio that has been shrinking for a very long time. I remember the latest goal was to have 10% of the land under cover. Where are we now? Do we have that? Is there an effort? Uh, kind of a, a kind of a, a serious plan and a serious project to achieve that minimal ten percent uh, under cover. There's an under effort. Cover. There's an effort. I think there's an effort uh, towards that end. Uh, there's an effort towards that end. Uh, but uh, whether we will be able to reach there. Ten percent. Ten percent. I'm not sure, but there's an effort going from the government side. The policies are there, the effort is there. Uh, Mohammed, now, just hold on to your thoughts. Yes. We'll take a short commercial break. Mm. Viewers will have a short commercial break. We were talking about the forest cover 10%. Only 10%, 90% can be used for everything else. Why is it so difficult for us to be able to have that 10%? Well, I think. And why are we increasingly allowing these millers? to go into the forest and, and cut down trees, sell them the trees for that matter. The forestry department is allowing millers to, to do that, mainly of this uh, softwood like cypress and, uh, and, 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 and yeah, yeah, the rest, cypress. Well, my bias has not been very much into forestry, but uh, from my uh, experience and knowledge and information that I have, it is something to do with a probably more or less uh, corruption. Mm -hmm. If, for example, the forestry officers who are supposed to be guiding these uh, usually collude with the mm -hmm. with the with the millers to cut the cypress, to cut and, the the cypress pine, and, and the pine, yeah. the security system, mm -hmm. which are supposed to be also be a check on the system, also a part of this, mm -hmm. the cartels which do this and business and government, and business and government. yes, going into it, yes. yes, business and government uh, they make uh, unholy kill, alliances. Yeah. Kill a lot of yes, that, yes. yes. So I think those are the major challenges, but in terms of I think the policy is there, uh, uh, and if, they need, if the government needs to stop, it is, it's easy because I think the forestry department is there, the forestry, even they have got a more or less a trained uh, personnel which are sec security-wise trained uh, to, to, to patron, uh, I mean, and Literally, do exactly what the game what, department what does for poachers yes, and the yes, rest. Yes. And, and but the sure biggest challenges in Kenya mainly is, is corruption. I think mm -hmm. we don't follow probably laws to the or policies or to regulations the, or regulations to yes. the to the to expected the to, the, to the letter. Yes, yes. those are the, the biggest challenges. Yeah. Tell me, uh, being an expert in that area, there's been we have the Boni Forest. Yes, and the Boni Forest extends all the way into Somalia. Yes. And the Somali part of the forest itself, which was massive forest before, has been cut down massively. And if you look at the aerial pictures, 
The Kenyan side is pretty much good, but the Somali side is completely cut off, completely devastated. Would that have an effect also on our own rainfall patterns and the rest of it because of that continuity? Or con uh, would it have a problem on us? So we can safely sit back and say that as long as our side, our part is not touched, then we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I think uh, usually uh, environmental impacts uh, on one area will always have impact on the other area. But in terms of rain pattern and all that, I think the, the forest itself, even including the pony and the other one, mm -hmm. is limited to influence the rain pattern in the, in the region. Yeah. But it affects uh, a lot of things. Uh, water absorption, uh, I mean, microclimate issues, which usually uh, affect in terms of productivity of the, of the soil itself. Mm -hmm. So it will have uh, a lot of negative e effect, mm -hmm. and that causes and something. All the species yeah. of trees uh, yeah, and the, the species ecological, of the ecological, insects and yeah, animals. Yeah, and the, 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 the ecosystem of that area. Mm -hmm. That also affects the, uh, the anthropological part of it, mm -hmm. uh, because it causes migration. Mm -hmm. People will be moving from where they are to live to somewhere where it's more productive and more. That, that, me that means a lot of inward forces moving into Kenya, where, since the border of the people are, are the same. Mm -hmm. But also what it tells you is in terms of uh, when states fail to do their, uh, all their, role. their role, that's what happens. Uh, when, you know, uh, like now, I think the current system in, in, in Jubaland mm. uh, played a role, uh, maybe with the connivance of probably, uh, as we hear from the news, the Kenya uh, defense forces. Uh, defense forces. Yes. I mean, so that's a contributing factor. Yeah. But that will also have, at the end of the day, effect on, 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 on both sides. I, I hear now, for example, the, the border between Boni and the, I mean, this part of Kenya and yes, the, was yes, closed. Yes. And people were up in arms against the government, saying, yes. no, we are saying people, we can't, you can't close it because trade and a lot of things, it affects. Yes. So it affects, uh, so that shows the effect, the anthropological effect yes. of climate and yes. environmental issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where the interviews of uh, what you do to one, to one part. Uh, it is just like uh, this climate change and you know the carbon uh, effect on the world. Yes, yes. Africa is uh, it, it contributes least yes. issues to into the ozone into the into the into the environment atmosphere. Into, to atmosphere. Yes. But it also have because of its lack of capacity of managing you know the side effects of climate change. Mm -hmm. It also it's affected most, mm -hmm. while the other countries probably are well prepared to mitigate mm -hmm. uh, those issues. Uh, so. Whatever so happens, what happens in your neighbor basically it, it, has an yes, effect it, on you. Yes, definitely. yes, yes. If your neighbor, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, doesn't have a public toilet and it, it, it does all its business around in its compound, I mean, you're going to feel the smell and you're yes. going to feel the, yes, the effect yes, of yes, that. Yes. So that is, that is how, how, although it might not affect things to do with rain, rain patterns and mm -hmm. things like that, because the, the forest, like, it's not like the Amazon, whereby, you know, it can have a real impact mm -hmm. in terms of creating uh, vapor and, you know, mm -hmm. cyclones and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, creating a whole system, ecosystems of, of, of you know, wet, uh, wet environment, which can be moved to another part of the country, mm -hmm. and it deposits there as a wet, mm -hmm. as a... a I have, I have, I've had an opportunity to watch basically how they, the ecosystem is between the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Yes. Haiti is a desert, literally. They yes. Cut all the trees there. Yes. But the Dominican Republic has completely protected it. Yes. And, and it, it's an indication. Yes. That these two countries shared everything we said before. Yes. But the, the one which has protected its environment is very rich. Yes. But the one which is not in the protected environment is, 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 is one of the poorest And the consequences the will be now uh, more social upheavals, like yes. the way the, the way Haiti is. Haiti is always, uh, yes, You always, know, people yes. have to look for resources to yes, live on, yes. and that means they have to move to their neighbors, and that means population uh, effect. And immigration and, and everything uh, yes, else. Yes. So, so we have a duty ourselves. Yes. Uh, instead of protecting the, the, the authorities in, uh, in Jubaland, yes. who are cutting the trees, yes. and, and our KDF officers also taking some of the proceeds, we have a responsibility to protect that environment. Uh, very much. Because of the effect it can have on us. Very much. We have, yes. that is a, is, yeah. a, is a cardinal responsibility, actually, in terms yeah. of uh, um, environmental management. Tell me, political aspects of the environment itself. Mao Forest. Mao Forest, well, has had a, a powerful negative impact on the political fortunes of uh, the former Prime Minister, Raila Odinga in the Rift Valley, Kalenjin Rift Valley to be more precise, because the Maasai part was pretty much in support of the Prime Minister's policies those days. And, and, and you could safely say it contributed a lot in, 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 among, uh, in addition to the ICC and others bringing 
the duo together of uh, uh, Uru and Ruto. Uh, is, is environmental protection right now, resettlement, the movement of people from the water catchments and the rest of it, such a life wire that politicians would rather avoid it because of the consequences it can have on them? You think, that is, you think that's a sufficient, sufficiently justifiable trade-off? Or we should just protect our environments? Yes, uh, but I think uh, it is, uh, it's like a, a sword with the two edges. Yes. Uh, what happens is that environmental issues can be used as a political tool to you know, undermine your opponents. Mm -hmm. uh, like I think it happened probably in Mao Forest. In Mao Forest, yes, yes. Uh, probably. Mm -hmm. I, I would think uh, maybe the forces who were against Rayla at that time mm -hmm. used that as an opportunity to. Yes, to, yes, to, yes, to yes. Uh, it can also be the other way around, whereby. Uh, um, the right policies and all the uh, when you do the right things and uh, you know you protect uh, genuinely environmental uh, conservation and preservations it can contribute to I mean good politics and it can I mean benefit the society wealth and, and wealth and uh, uh, water probably as a water catchment mm -hmm. and uh, because if for example that area is totally uh, settled and uh, you know that forest is cleared it will have effect to all the rivers which come from there, downwards, I mean southwards and northwards and also westwards to the Lake Victoria. Uh, I mean south, uh, Tanzania. T Tanzania, the Wasonyura North and Wasonyura South. Mm -hmm. I mean, sorry, Wasonyura South especially and uh, this Mara Rivers and uh, I think. The Mara uh, Rivers and the rest of yes, them yes. which also flow yes. into the, the, the Sondu, National the, the Sondu and you know these rivers which uh, drain to the uh, Lake. Lake Victoria. Yes. So all those things will be affected. Which in turn also has an effect on, uh, the, Tana, on the Nile River from On there. the Nile River. Yes. Uh, so it becomes even a transboundary issue, yes. a transboundary resource issue. Yes, yes. Uh, the, and then uh, the, the soil erosion the part of it, the productivity of the soil itself, mm -hmm. it affects many things. So uh, it is, uh, if, if it is genuinely done from perspective of environmental conservation and preservation and all that, it can be beneficial to the society. It can be, you know, but if it's also used negatively, I mean, well, if you, it's politicized, it can have the other, the other impact on the other side. We are overburdened by debt. Uh. We have a debt crisis in the country. Uh. We have five point something trillion yes. Kenya shillings to pay. Yes. Uh, we don't have any natural resources in the country. Uh. The ordinary revenue, collection of ordinary revenue, is slightly over, over, over a trillion. We have a very ambitious budget of three trillion. Where are we headed? Well, uh, I'm not an expert in the area of, I mean, financial management and budget, but from the little, uh, <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, uh, information I have, uh, especially with relation to one of my friends, uh, mm -hmm. Who has been expounding on this thing? Mm -hmm. Who is Willier, a, who is, expert, yes. who is a who is a who is a, He works for a bank in uh, Riyadh. In Riyadh, uh, as an investment. Yeah, bank, it was right? it was really enlightening. I had I saw one of his uh, one one of his uh, articles. No, one of his uh, interviews mm -hmm. with the, mm -hmm. with the, I think an investment TV or something like that mm -hmm. run by some uh, one mm -hmm. Khan Sahaju. Mm -hmm. uh, he it is it is it's not sustainable. That's what what basically this is. What we are creating, basically, he says, if I correct him rightly, that uh, the revenue we collect and what we budget for do not match. Mm -hmm. So there's always a shortfall on of the budget. Of the budget, mm -hmm. uh, and then the to try and fill in through debts. Yes, to try to fill in through, through debts. debts and grants. So these things cumulatively over time mm -hmm. will not be sustainable. It's like a Ponzi scheme. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is, I think, generally not... Finally, it will come It will collapse, yes. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it is going to crash. Uh, melt down. It melt down. Mm -hmm. I think from my basic... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, economic, economic... Yes, yes. yes. Although I did, although I did uh, economics, a lot of economics as a resource manager. Mm -hmm. You know, there's resource economics and yes, that. Yes. I think, principally, I think that will be the main, main, main thing. I think the, the information... And these things is in the public. Mm -hmm. Sustainability of how things are done uh, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, the revenue collection and the expenditure, mm -hmm. are they, whether they are matching or not, is the, is the main, main, main issue. As somebody who comes from the Eastern Province, <laughs> as a province that has experienced insecurity now for, for quite a long time. Yes. And insecurity in the Eastern Province is tied pretty much in Somalia. 
whatever happens in Somalia has an effect on the Eastern Promise because of that long border and, and, and the fact that it's easy for people to cross those borders. Now there seems to be a, a dispute, a maritime dispute between the two countries. How do you see the fortunes of the people of Modesto Province? Do you see a situation in which you're going to be caught up in that anvil, you know, between, between a hard place and a rock? Or a hammer, a hard place and a hammer? A hammer or I an think, anvil and a hammer? I think uh, the current situation in the country mm. will not allow and should not allow, and I say shall not allow, mm. for I think the Kenya system or state or government to do what it used to do before the mm -hmm. 2010 election, mm -hmm. uh, 2010, 2010, I mean, constitution. The human rights violations. The human that rights violations. And, although it problems. happened, uh, yes. the Kasarani issue yes, and, these yes, and yes, all yes, that, it happened. Yes, yes. Uh, these are two state issues. Yes. Uh, I think it's in ICG, uh, uh, international, ICJ. ICJ, International mm -hmm. Court of... of, of uh, I think we should approach this issue uh, as a state, which it has got its own policy, I mean, it has got its own way of doing things and diplomatically. We fight it out in court, yes. yes. Yeah. But I think uh, it will not accept. It will not be acceptable anymore. I think abuse and uh, and, uh, and uh, violations, violations, yeah. and uh, for the innocent uh, for the innocent Kenyans. I think and uh, yeah. I think that should if uh, because this a country is a. Is, is, is amalgamation of peoples of different yeah, orientations, I mean, cultural yeah. background and that. Uh -huh. If people can't live together, there's yeah. always uh, the option for divorce. I mean, uh, in, any, in, any, in uh -huh. any, in the UK, it uh -huh. is the Welsh, Scotland, and the England. Uh -huh. And always the Scotland, they go for referendum to make uh -huh. sure that. I think if uh, things push come to shove, uh -huh. I think uh, in terms of knowledge, in terms of resources, in terms of uh, everything, the Somalis, I think, are more uh -huh. currently uh, integrated into inte the mainstream into of the, the Kenyan society. the mainstream said. Yes, and, and are, are protecting that, uh, this, that sovereignty yeah. and nationality itself. Itself, yes. yes. So I think... Uh, Abusers usually come from other adventurous guys who are trying to yes, use it as yes, a projection. Yes, yes. Now yes. that the economy is very bad. Yes, I uh, would say that... You pick up a fight with somebody else, go fight somebody else if yes, you want. Yes. But don't come back to us. To us, yes. yes. And I think that's I say for the region. Yes. But I think uh, between the two countries, mm. and probably there's the global issue, mm. in, in resource management they say, I mean, when it comes to this issue of natural resources, uh, because ga gas and oil is, a, is part of natural resources, uh, it, is, it becomes man eat man society. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of vultures and global players yes, who yes, really yes. want yes. to hover have, around. Yeah. Uh, hover around. Mm -hmm. So I think Kenya and Somalia, I Need think they have got more, mm -hmm. more, more common interest, mm -hmm. uh, more common interest uh, mm -hmm. than, 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 than I think outside. The Somalis, so the Somalis probably the states, the states, the yes. states, the state that played a role mm -hmm. in creating probably these states. The British, mm -hmm. what is their role? I mean, we know uh, from history that mm -hmm. they played a role in the in yeah, the in the in the current in the in the pro, in the in the big decrement of the of northern Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, while they were more interested in their. There is they they negotiated. Region, yes, they yes. negotiated on behalf of this, created more havoc, mm -hmm. and uh, they are coming back. Probably they are with one side or another playing. So I think we should be conscious about the new colonialism aspect of this, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Pan-Africanism and the, you know relations with the neighbors. We can always live yes, together yes, and work yes, together yes. as I think two those sister are the, countries. Those, yes. are the, those are the things we really need to yes, look at. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and, and the government should see Kenyan yes. Somalis as Kenyans. As Kenyans, yes. Yes, yes. And, uh, and Somalis should be confident enough to say that no, uh, we will not accept this. Mm. And uh, the, if, the Kenyan Somalis. Yes, the Kenyan Somalis. That, yes, uh, no yes. abuses can no take abuses place. No abuses can be And, and yeah. I think that should yeah. be that should be clear. And and I think. Maybe the country, in terms of uh, informed perspectives and all this, I don't think whether we are at that stage of the in the in the shift of war or those uh, times. Adventurism, when, you know, adventurism. Yeah. Communities. Uh, I mean, the state mm. was using that. Every as Kenyan Somali has more to protect his nationality yes, here. Yes. And 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 and, and sovereignty. Yes, and yes, basically yes. the. So it is the both the people of of the region and the, the government, mm. but also between the states and the. Looking at the regional, I mean, international. The two countries have more in common than, in common than any other two countries that yes. neighbor one another. Yes, very yes. much. Very Except much. Ethiopia, of course, yes. and Somalia. Yes. Which is the same. And Ethiopia has dealt with that very well. Very well, yes. And yes. The new regime in Ethiopia yes. has, has literally told Somalia, look, yes. we, we're here as your brothers. Yes. If the issues between us and Somalia, we'll talk about it. Yes. Now, why are we not doing that in Kenya? Is it because we are so debt ridden and we are 
too many internal problems here and handshake and uh, new constitution and everything else. So when it, nothing works and it looks like it's going to come to a crash, you have to look for an external enemy. Yes. And, and in that external enemy, you also have to look for internal people to intern the way yes. the Americans had to push the Japanese, you know. Yes. American Japanese yes. were put into internments those yes. days. Yes. And uh, Kasarani can be said to be can nothing. Be an it's exactly yes. the same. Yes. Exactly the same. And I think uh, the, the intelligence here of the, of, the, of the community, of the region, I think should be, I think be conscious about that, that whatever happened in the past yes. should not yes. be allowed to happen yes. in yes. this. I mean, yes. and not uh, to oppose the state, but, you know, to... Uh, to help the state, as a matter of fact, to, to fundamentally support. assert the rights mm -hmm. and, uh, and and clarify. Mm -hmm. I mean, what who is a Kenyan citizen? What is the citizenship issue? Mm -hmm. I mean, still it exists. I, I I actually applied for. I was Passport. applying for a for for a commission uh, mm -hmm. just recently, and I went for for police clearance, mm -hmm. and I was told, uh, you know, because of your name, mm -hmm. we have to find out whether your ID is. So it will take longer than the mm -hmm. normal criminal mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. Whether you know the fingerprints, they check the criminal. Mm -hmm. But this one I was told it has to go to which is a terrible discrimination. We, it has to go to the ID, ID um, immigration department no no it's we go, called, it has to go to the registration of persons re registration of persons yes, to, to check to first of all whether your ID is genuine whether you are a Kenyan or a whether Somali, you are a Kenyan or, or you go or a refugee or, or a refugee or something like that I mean so I think and, uh, and many Kenyans that run into thousands yes registered themselves as refugees to go and access that food yes, yes. when there was a drought yes Yes, yes, yes. You know that. Yeah. Yes, and right yes. now they can't get their paperwork and the rest yes. of it. Yes. Anyway, we have a responsibility ourselves as Kenyans who have got their ethnic brothers in, in an exclusive country of their own. You see, the difference between any other country and Somalia is that Somalia is inhabited 100% by Somalis. Yes. You see, you can't have, we can't have a similar situation right now with Tanzanians because we have Tanzanians, Maasai is on both sides. We have the Digos on both sides. But in, in both cases, they constitute only a small, small uh, percentage of the overall nation. You go to Tanzania, there are over 80 tribes. You come to Kenya, we are over 40 tribes. You go to Ethiopia, there are over, what, 120 tribes. But Somalia is only one tribe. One tribe. And because we are Somalis as an ethnic yes. community and we are Kenyans, here is a suspicion that always comes, which is misplaced. Which is very much misplaced. misplaced. Yes. It's very misplaced, yeah. But we hope our country and our brothers across here can always sort out the issues. And, and we, we, have, uh, we can look at the integration, the broader integration of the region itself, the whole of Africa. It will eliminate all those you know, small, small quarrels. Uh, because when a uh, Tanzanian can literally go to Gariza and do business, or a Gariza person can go to Dar es Salaam and do business, without necessarily having to show anything other than his ID card. Well, oh. Gariza cannot go to Doble to yeah. guide to... Today, to, today yes. things are, yes. Or we can go to Ethiopia and everywhere else. And I think Kenya being very central to that is the one we should build that kind of an environment. What do you think is what we can do our country right now? There's a referendum which is on the way. The idea is to have a more responsive uh, government where you have a prime minister, you have a ceremonial president and a prime minister who is accountable to the people. Or the idea could also be to bring in all those people who are fighting for the presidency and, you know, instead of us fighting over this banquet, we might as well share it. So what is your opinion? What is your take on the referendum, the pending referendum? Do you support it? If you support it, and what, under what circumstances? Or why would you be opposed under what circumstances? I have not up to now maybe uh, grasped very much on what is the need for a referendum. But if, for example, uh, I understand there are gaps uh, in probably uh, to create a harmonious country. Mm -hmm. uh, there might be need for the change in the governance system. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, from there is a talk of presidential to prime, uh, prime uh, parliamentary, parliamentary system. system. Where you have the prime minister accountable to the people yes, on the yes, floor yes. of the house. Uh, each group, each has got its own advantage and merits. Uh, mm -hmm. Parliamentary systems usually comes up with a lot of changes in government and, you know, parliament always uh, deposing uh, uh, Prime Ministers, Prime Ministers yes, and things yes, like that. Yes, while, yes. while presidential system is a strong system, if it's not abused, which yes. you know most of the times happens, it's, it's predictable. It's predictable. You were there for so, five but years. that will require uh, a, a very massive checks of balance uh, from Parliament yes. and the judiciary, yes. which are also sometimes compromised. Yeah. So it not will sometimes, almost all the time. All, right uh, especially yeah. at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, for example, there is, there can be a system. Mm -hmm. uh, a hybrid system uh, whereby there's a ceremonial president, mm -hmm. uh, a parliamentary uh, system, mm -hmm. 
or there's a pure parliamentary system uh, with all it is uh, it is uh, but that can easily be checked mm. but countries with the parliamentary systems have got strong institutional systems mm -hmm. whereby you know bureaucracies can go on mm -hmm. and things can run even if the government is deposed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so do we have that that's also another question which is which is there if we go for parliamentary system yes uh, but the presidential system it's abused and you know becomes authoritarian how do we check it's that it's a do or die is it is a do or die so uh, we are between uh two hard 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 places. hard places yeah yes. Uh, but I think if issues of law and order can be taken care of, if, uh, you know, the bureaucracies can move and, you know, things can go on, mm -hmm. Kenya is uh, relatively robust in terms of institutional aspects. If that can be worked on, I think parliamentary system where there's a very clear check and uh, balance uh, system where government can be changed might be a better option. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've always advocated myself for a parliamentary system because of that accountability. Yes. That, you see, right now we have an imperial president who yes. can do what he wants, yes. and nobody can question it yes. because he's there in the. In the, in the but the he is to be checked by parliament and but the if, judiciary. But if, if he has to, if uh, he but they are muscled through financial uh, blackmail, like mm. now the judiciary just uh, cut mm. their budget. Mm. Uh, parliament now has increased its budget. Uh, as, um, you know, always uh, manipulates. Uh, on behalf of the executive, mm -hmm. the other is the other arm of the government. Mm -hmm. So that 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 is now is also a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Parliament has got a budget of about forty-five billion. Yes. And judiciary, which is uh, seven thousand workers and all over the country, yeah. the yes. of course of the country, has only seven billion. Oh, sorry, eighteen billion. Yes. And then uh, that's that's, that's a powerful imbalance, very very powerful imbalance. But of course, you you Parliament has. Uh, the system will, ch it will change. If we have a parliamentary system, by the way, our standing orders are very clear. Right now, parliament is behaving like an authoritarian uh, imperial power themselves. And we can stop the budget. But ordinarily, parliament cannot stop the budget. All that it can do is to, sh as, as, as a demonstration. Scrutinize. No, as a demonstration of its own displeasure. Yes. It can take off one pound from a, 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 what do you call a budget for any line ministry. Can you imagine? So that's how it was. But right now they come up with their own rules. And when I was there, at least, I mean, that was not the case. I was the deputy speaker. I told them, no, clearly, the cardinal work, the centerpiece of the work of parliament itself is first and foremost to pass government finance bills. Government finance bills. That basically is, 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 is the, the, the logic, the thought behind the creation of parliament. House of Commons. It was there, of course, to, to, to pass the, without any powers to stop that budget of the, of the kings and the queens of England. So even when I came in, that's time when I came into the first parliament, that's how it was. So right now, everybody has become an autocratic ruler. Parliament is authoritarian. Judiciary have devolved also corruption so that you find a judge gives an, um, a, um, a certain orders or rulings. Court of Appeal changes. Supreme Court changes. You don't you wonder what they're, what they're, where they're reading from. Are they reading the same law that they studied in the university together? Or well, everybody's coming from a different thing? Go to legislature. You see the way they're behaving right now. I can see the president literally threatening and crying and, you know. And, and somebody told me, oh, he will do it for a few days and come back to his business. We'll yes, still yes. continue ourselves. <laughs> uh, you go, you see this, the, the executive, you just wonder who is in charge and what, what exactly is supposed to be done. So all the three arms of the government are dysfunctional as we talk right yeah. now in this country. So, so th let's, that let's means there's a, there's a need for the referendum and to there's come up need, with a system there's, there's which a is... Need, there's a need for rebooting of the whole thing. Of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah rebooting of the whole thing. So I think uh, a new constitution uh, amendments as well as to take uh, cognizance of all that the challenges that we've seen. Yeah, but uh, is it something which now will be inclusive uh, or it's now something targeted for probably... I'm now becoming the interviewer. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, you proceed. That yeah, is yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, that's, that's the nature of this thing. It's yes. an interactive debate. Yes. It's not, it's not yes, just... Yes, uh, yes. It's not just... So, uh, it's, uh, it's not just... Uh, it's not just uh, I'm not just interviewing you. Yes, it's yes, actually an interactive yes, yes. Debate. Well, that's, that's basically how it's supposed to be. Uh, I wish we had more time. Yes. If we had much more time. We would, yes. we would dwell on this uh, a lot more. Yeah. 
We are less hopeful the best for our country. We it's don't have any other country ourselves. It's my pleasure. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to, have to host you, Mohamed Wali. Thank you. Viewers, we have come to the end of our speaker's uh, gallery episode today. And thank you very much.